It's the Morning Marketing Machine, here to grow your e-commerce business with proven marketing strategies and tactics, so you can run your business with machine-like precision. My name is Douglas Levin, let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to the Morning Marketing Machine. Um, so uh, today I'm, I'm very excited because I have a special guest. So uh, Noemi Bolajan is a musician, music producer, Instagram influencer, proud cat mom, and, e and all around e-commerce badass. Uh, uh, she's someone uh, that I, I really look up to as being very knowledgeable about so many things. And I'm, I'm always grateful um, whenever I, I get a chance to either talk to her or kind of see her and, and learn from her. So I wanted to uh, welcome uh, Noemi. Uh, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so great having you on. Uh, obviously, like we've seen each other in, in, in the groups and everything along those lines. So um, I know that like you, uh, uh, where you made your name is more on the Instagram side, but you're obviously doing a lot more on, on the e-commerce side right now. Um, so like, uh, I, I guess one of the things I would ask is you're kind of making that transition a little bit. It's like, what's like, this is something that I know a lot of business owners in general have a hard time trying to figure out is like, what's the most important thing? So like for you right now, like what would you say is like the most important thing that you're working on like right now? Yeah, so I just recently launched a product, my first ever PL product, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm coming from the music background, like as a music producer, I never have even thought that I would do something like this, even though it's like, wow, it's amazing, you know? So that's my main focus now. And we just launched like a week ago. So everything is fresh. Everything is super exciting. I just got my third review and it's a Vine reviewer, which is, and it's a five star and it says excellent. So I'm like in heaven's right now. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's kind of my main focus now and trying to do as much and as, as, as best as I can at this point. So that's it kind of. All right. So, so how did you end up arriving that like that was going to be the most important thing for you like right now? Um, I, I was dabbling with this idea for the past three years and I, I took like some courses already and I was like, yeah, this is the time. This is what, what I want to do at the moment. And in the meantime, uh, we were moving a lot. So for me, it was a lot of hassle, a lot of what to do, where should we end up? We always wanted to come to the States. I'm originally from Europe. So we were, um, uh, living in Austria for the past 10 years and just recently moved to, uh, to the States. And basically this was, this was it. This was the time to start and to really make um, that dream become true. So this is why I'm like really pushing it and really learning as much as I can. I barely sleep. I, I'm super excited all the time. So yeah, I'm drinking a lot of coffee too. So <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey you're, yeah. you're you always seem so energetic in, uh, in general i didn't know coffee was your secret <laughs> it's coffee it's coffee it's definitely so you, you will always see me sipping my cat <laughs> mug <laughs> fulfilled with coffee and fulfilled with energy and this is the type of like nescafe that is super strong <laughs> so yeah this is what what's my potion for life is at the moment <laughs> <laughs> cool cool um so I guess uh, this kind of brings up another topic. Like, so, um, uh, it, it, yeah, can't, can't speak to it. <laughs> so, so do you have a, since you're saying you don't really get a whole lot of sleep, like do you have a specific morning routine that you go, go through every morning to kind of get ready for the day other than coffee or, or is, or what, what do you typically do? So at the moment I don't, I did for the past, um, I, I think you're familiar with uh, miracle morning, the book. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I kind of did that for the past five years or so. And it really helped me to become much more organized, self-conscious, uh, self-conscious, and also like helped me with uh, having focus a lot. Now the past few months or so on, everything has been a bit hectic. So I don't really have that. But what I discovered is that I am I'm really good at working during now, in, during the night, and I have a lot of energy and I have a lot of creativity. So what I'm doing now, maybe this is also like a new habit or new routine to um, have around a 30 minutes nap during mm -hmm. the day when I feel that I am exhausted. And afterwards I can work until three, four o'clock uh, in the morning, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm also like waking up around between 7.30 and nine o'clock and that still keeps me going so 
let's see for how long. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so what is it that you didn't really like in terms of like the miracle, like, cause you, you did miracle morning, you were saying for five years and mm -hmm. like, so, so like, what was it really the impetus to kind of make the change really to, to, to what you've been doing now and like sleeping a little bit more like for the nap so you can kind of work later? Yeah. So I, I was, I, I truly believe in self development and I tried to push myself as much as possible. So it, every morning I was waking up at 6.30 and every morning I had this routine of meditating and then doing sports, like 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes of like exercises, light, light to heavy weight exercising. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I had all, all that. But what I, I, I noticed is my body wouldn't cope with me because I was pushing myself so hard and, and somehow it's like, if you're not getting enough rest or not necessarily enough rest because right at this point I can also say that I'm not getting enough rest you know the eight hours mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's it helped me personally to know much better my clock my internal clock to understand it better mm -hmm. and now that I know that how it should look um, the proper way to for things to work I think this is how I can like uh, combine that principle with what I'm doing now basically and I, I also liked it that um, I did all these affirmations and all this like journaling and reading and so on. And uh, now I have all that in like um, steroid <laughs> because until now it was all the time like the affirmations and the journaling, it was like somehow inside. So I didn't share it with anyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I took from there, it's uh, being grateful and um, basically practicing being grateful and telling people like in the morning I'm, I'm, I would wake up and yeah, the Wizards of Amazon Telegram chat, for example, and there is well, like, it's a question there and I just simply like going to answer it or just getting in touch with that person or something like so, to, to give something meaningful. So that way I, I noticed that it's way better rather than just writing to myself or affirming those things to myself or just being grateful for, oh, thank God for five fingers or thank God, you know, like mm -hmm. those kind of things. So I am um, experimenting with this for the past eight months. And so far I've seen that uh, it's, yeah, I cannot really compare it to what it was before because now it's very active and now it's like, not only I am happy, but I'm making three other people's lives happier as well or better as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's also a takeaway from Miracle Morning. You know, I like to connect dots that uh, seem not to be there or not easily or not easily noticeable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the book itself helped me a lot. I'm not practicing at all <laughs> what it says now, but I'm still living by the book. Right. Um, kind well, of that. Well, well, yeah, it, it sounds like from what you're saying, like, like it's, it's, it, at this point you're getting that connection with with people like we're uh it obviously with the virus and everything else that's been going on and like being on zoom and other things it's harder than it was when you would go to like conferences and and but we are as a people like we like to have that connection with people and and this still gives like you that it helps other people out so it is obviously it's not the exact like word for word meaning of miracle morning but it's still giving you a lot of that same like aspect where it, where it helps and like you were saying it helps so many other people as well um so, right. so yeah so so yeah yeah and, and i know i've been struggling um sometimes as well in terms of like the like uh i i, I was following miracle morning for a while i still am but like you kind of get into that game sometimes trying to keep getting up earlier and earlier and yeah. like yeah, you kind of so like i know Car uh, carlos he, he he functions well in like three or four hours of sleep i i can't so like uh like uh i think i was i was having an issue where i would, I would get up at like eight sometimes and then i try and do it all right now i'm gonna get up at seven and now i'm gonna try and get 6 30 and like keep, keep trying to push it as early mm -hmm. as you can but then i like i know for me i start to feel a little more like groggy and, and it's just hard to focus sometimes for me so and like everyone seems to be different on that like you gotta find what works for you and obviously you've kind of found that um, yeah so I'm still mastering it at this point. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and, and that's where it, what it comes back to the idea of like everyone's everyone's got their own thing that works for them, right? right. And and obviously like you're like I'm still messing with mine. Like Miracle Morning's a great starting point. Like obviously it helped you to start. You you did it for five years, and now you're finding something else that seems like it's working a little bit better for you overall. 
Um, I'm still trying to figure out me <laughs> what mine is, but yeah, um, but that, I think, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh you were saying. <laughs> I don't know, just what I wanted to say, I think for me it's uh, much more like sometimes people are like thinking very straight, like this is the book, I should apply this, you know, and they are doing, doing it, doing it, and then they're saying that not, it's not working. When, whether it's a principle that you should think how it's working for yourself. So for example, for me also, I'm, I can be also a morning person, but I can also be like a night owl. Mm -hmm which is like great. But in the, in the meantime, if I'm not getting that 30 minutes sleep, that it's not a, a deep sleep, but it's really just a nap and just, you just barely like close your eyes, it's 30 minutes and that's it. Even if you cannot actually fall asleep, but maybe you're just laying on your bed forever. It, but it doesn't have to be more than that, you know? And right. this, was, this was a trick for me, you know? So it sounds like, and also this technique, I, I took it from like kids, I was looking at the kids cycle, the sleep cycle, mm -hmm. how usually they are sleeping from two and two, uh, two to three hours, like all, all the time, you know, and I was thinking if it's helping them and they wake up like full of energy. So mm -hmm. I was thinking if it's helping them, it should be the same process with us, you know, it's just, we're more mature. So we don't need the whole, uh, I don't know, two, three hours, like they usually sleep, you know, mm -hmm. and this is how I try to apply it in, in my case. And it's working perfectly. And when I'm up, I'm like, <laughs> like a kid. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. Um, so so obviously we're we're talking about Miracle Morning, and I know it's it's one of the focuses I've had a lot, like in the last year or so, is is trying to really work on reading and and really trying to learn. Um, and obviously, like we're part of the same book club. So uh, um, uh, it, what's a, a, like a current book that you're reading right now, and like uh, probably like your favorite in the last six months or so. Um. That's a shocker. I'm not reading anything at the moment. Oh, really? Haven't, yeah. Haven't been reading. Actually, I was reading with the book club, but that's also like kind of cheating way because I didn't read the book. I was listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I am listening, though, to lots of podcasts, especially what I am listening, I think, every week, twice at least. It's um, Joe Rogan. It has Naval Ravikant on, and it's a podcast that I'm not listening to Joe Rogan usually, but I really like Naval Ravikant and mm -hmm. I really like the way he's thinking. So that's something that I am listening to a lot. And somehow each time I'm listening to either it, it reminds me, okay, this is the right way to, to pursue things. This is the right way. This is the way how I actually am thinking, but I'm sometimes influenced by, I don't know, kind of situations, problems, whatever. It's just happening during that week, you know? So I'm not necessarily reading as much. Um, one of my favorite books, though, that I would recommend everyone, um, it's called Clicker Training. <laughs> really? Okay. And it's very unexpected, and many people wouldn't, as I was mentioning, I like to see and to connect the dots where it seems like illogical. Mm -hmm. uh, this specific book is for cat training. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very much based on um, positive reinforcement. And I tried doing this with people too. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's really working. And it's basically uh, helping you to understand how people work. And um, that's something that I really like. Now, on the more serious side, uh, I really like Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. Okay. He's mentioning a lot about um, resistance, like on a daily basis, you're dealing with resistance and all, all the time, like we are artists. I, I still consider you an artist, even though if you're not maybe pursuing music, you know, <laughs> uh, we are dealing on a daily basis with something that, okay, I'm just going to sit down and go, just going to focus and I'm going to finish this project, right? Mm -hmm. And he's talking a lot about resistance, that it's there all the time. But, but once, once that you um, manage to go over that barrier that's there, doesn't matter what it is, then you're right there in the spot and you can, like, you're really in the workflow, the natural, like, and you can focus. And then everything, like, doesn't, nothing matters and time just disappears, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I really like that book because it's truly like that and it's, like, that's all it takes and you can focus and you can be right there present and um yeah that book really inspired me and still it, it's inspiring me um let me think 
I think also it depends very much on uh, what kind of guidance of what kind of recommendation do you want to give someone mm -hmm. um, financially, for example, Rich Dad Poor Dad, best ever book I read. Mm -hmm. And I'm still keeping up with the Rich Dad uh, radio show, like every week they are having a new podcast and every week I'm still listening to it for the last five years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think it, it, it very much depends on what would be the recommendation or which is the best book that you read because um, most of the time, you know, what's best for me, it's not the right moment for you, you right. know, to recommend. So, but the clicker training book, <laughs> that's for everyone. <laughs> that's a, a high mastery. That one and also How to Pitch Anything by Oren Klaff. Mm -hmm. Oren Klaff? Did I pronounce her name? I think it's Oren Klaff. Okay. Uh, from that book, what I learned especially is um, how, how to talk to people and how you, to sell your ideas. So basically the book is about pitching, um, how to pitch someone something, right? If you're a startup, how to pitch your idea. What I might take away from there, it was like how to pitch yourself to someone. It's not necessarily your idea, but how, how to make yourself like to be the same level as I don't know, like, for example, Carlos, you know, he's like a kind person and so on, but still he's a freaking millionaire. And <laughs> you have to know how to uh, relate to that person, you know? So mm -hmm. I think how to, pitch every, and, uh, how to pitch anything helped me tremendously in my relationship with people and mm -hmm. not necessarily to pitch them something, but to pitch them myself, my attitude, you know? So, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I think like, I, I think it was actually last week, I, I know that Carlos was talking about the idea of like sales and kind of selling yourself a little bit when we mm -hmm. were like on that kind of group session. And and that's something like that everyone's always got to learn about anyway, um, j in general. And and like understanding the psychology part behind it, like obviously you're talking about. I mean, it's, yeah. it's something that's overlooked, but I mean, we're, we're doing it every day. Um, so mm -hmm. if uh, being able to learn that, like you were saying, um, can have a big impact in, in your life. It's, it's not something you think about. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that we, yes, as, exactly as you were saying, we're doing it every day just with, the only thing is that we are not realizing that we're doing it all, like every day and this is why we don't want to become a master of it. Mm -hmm. Because if you're thinking, uh, I, I, I was like, I read a lot of sales books as well and I also like from the Rich Dad company, it's uh, this guy who's on the sales side, his name is uh, Blair Singer. Mm -hmm. And he was somehow explaining how um, there are like four types of people who are selling like the hard sale, the like the type of person who's like coming and showing their family and come kind of like heartworn, you know, mm -hmm. the chihuahua type who is like this geeky, very like he knows everything. And mm -hmm. I think there was one more, uh, the poodle, I think. This is how he categorized it, who was like this very sharp dressing and this kind of like, I know everything, you know, that uh, million dollar listing style, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, truly, I think that now we're mentioning sales. Mm -hmm. What helped me most grow, um, I'm selling myself to myself every day. It's ideas, it's thoughts, and that little voice that's inside your head has tremendous power and most of the time i think what's what we are missing on is that we don't accept that that's there first off the second thing is that once we realize that it's there uh, we don't recognize that all those negative thoughts are not ours but the ones around us you know because think of a, a kid for example their brain is like it's still pure they would never think that they cannot do anything they were like, okay, it's a mountain, I will climb, I will whatever, you know, or I fall, just, I, I just get up fast, you know. So I think that society and all this, like, the process of growing up into this, like, cubicle, whatever, you know, what mm. society brings us to, that's also um, damaging us, you know. So this mm. is why. Let's talk about sales, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and it's it's definitely like I, I know I've read it everywhere. I kind of see it in society as well. The same thing you're talking about. We're like, um, you're, 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 yes. On the one hand, when you're like a toddler or like a baby or something, um, you don't want to hear the screaming. You don't want to hear when the the kid is just looking at something like, I want this. I'm going to do it, or or they have no fear. And mm -hmm. 
and you're doing it obviously in a way as a, like say as a parent or, or if your parent was doing it to you where there's, they're obviously doing it for a reason, whether it's just that they don't want you to scream anymore or, or to live in society's rules or whatever it is. Um, so I understand why it's done, but it also has that damaging effect to us over time where, where we, can, we can't think we can't do something when like, okay. like you look at those people like you look at what Elon Musk and he wants to build a rocket and, and go to Mars and, and Jeff Bezos wants to do all these things as well. And like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, all these people that are like getting back to that thought process of I can do anything where right. like it gets beaten out, beaten out of us over like when we're kids and a lot of us don't ever get it back. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think what you're saying is something that really has a big impact in everyone's life if they think about it and try and get back to that level. Um, but this kind of brings up another point, like, um, like when you're talking uh, earlier, a little bit earlier about like those negative thoughts kind of go in your head. Like, I know that's something that I've, I struggle with, um, uh, all the time. I know that a lot of people do as well. So like, like, what do you do in those situations when you are like, you've got, whether it's a stumbling block you're trying to get over or you're like in a funk and you just can't be productive for whatever reason, like, what do you, what have you done and what seems to work for you to kind of get over those blocks when you're, when you're kind of stuck? Um, I use different methods and different tactics. It depends when I feel in a different way. Mm -hmm. To give you an example, like affirmations, I was mentioning about affirmations. Mm -hmm. uh, affirmations, what they are, it's just, you're really repeating to yourself something that you want to become, right? the same way it sells it's you're selling yourself no i'm a freaking millionaire no i can do this no i am strong no i you know because most of the time it's as i was saying society's words like oh let me or prove me that you can do this and like, okay <laughs> i wanted to curse like who are you to prove you something no i have to prove myself mm -hmm. because you are nobody at the end i mean i'm not saying it in the bad way but it's not you I mean, I have to prove myself because once that I prove myself, you can see it too. And maybe I can inspire you as well, you know? So most of the time what I did, I, I did the, the affirmations thing. But what I noticed then it's um, with the miracle morning or within that period when, while I was doing the miracle morning, mm -hmm. I became very depressed because I affirmed myself something and I was like, okay, I will do a hundred or whatever. I will do 10 K this month. Mm -hmm. and I clearly knew no I'm not doing that you know and I was affirming every day the same things and it didn't click because it, it wasn't true you know mm -hmm. and um, at, at, at this point I'm 32 right and when I was 30 I was saying okay I will be a millionaire and I wasn't a millionaire I was like way way less than I ever thought mm -hmm. and then I, I became very like okay this never it's going to happen whatever and thing is that um the only way for me was to get out of that is by doing sports and um you can basically do anything it doesn't really matter what but something to like uh, speed up your heart rate mm -hmm. because everything what's once that you are sad it's it's here it's here it's 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 your brain doesn't know negative thought for positive thought they, they are just thinking they, it's just taking information in right mm -hmm. but Ones that, uh, like through sports, I'm not sure what kind, kind, kind of or type, type of like uh, um, chemical reaction is inside your brain, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's making you feel better. So most of the time what I did, I just did sports and it was like 20 minutes or just jumping, just whatever, something stupid to, to like make my heart feel that I'm alive, you know? And then mm -hmm. it was like, yes, I can do this, you know? And it's funny because most people wouldn't uh, expect this answer. You know, they would say, yeah, you have to meditate. You have to. And I did all that. I did. And I'm not saying it's not correct or it's not helping. Mm -hmm. But when the power is so strong inside your mind, you have to crack it with something else, you know, because you cannot replace it simply because you would replace it only by thought process. And thought process is not working because that, that's what you brought you there down, you know. Right. So this is something that helped me. And I'm still, this is why I'm still doing sports. And even if you're just, I am making like funny jokes with my husband. I'm like a rabbit, you know, <laughs> <Now> <laughs> it's just jumping all over the place, you know, and um, it's helping. I, I think that 
what I can suggest anyone who's dealing with these negative thoughts in their mind, first off, to realize, no, I can do everything what I put into mind, right? Until you're not proving yourself that you cannot do it, like truly, or either because of health reasons, either because of, I don't know, health reasons would be for me the, the that, that's the only thing why you cannot do something, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you can truly do anything. And once that you have that mindset in, and you also add the fun part. So I think also you're a very analytical person. Mm-hmm. Um, what I realized is that I try to win by my brain. But the brain cannot work uh, properly because it has only like data and information and you have to prove your brain something. Well, the brain doesn't realize the good or the bad. It's just information, right? But Mm -hmm. the moment that you're adding fun inside, like, no, I'm having fun. This is fun. It's like everything what's happening, like that's when you're getting into that flow state, you know? Mm-hmm. Like that nothing exists, nothing, you're just working and you're just having fun and it's, a, you know, that excitement, you know, what's happening, like, okay, let's go and let's do, let's, and no one has to come and tell you, this is what you have to do, this is what you, you know, it's like creativity, that's when it starts, you know, mm-hmm. probably I explained too much <laughs> on this, what I'm doing against negative stuff, but basically this is what I did and this is what's working for me and this is like, I just freaking land my first PR, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's working, right? Yeah, it's working. It's yeah. working. Yeah, and, and I know you're, you're actually not the first person who's talked about, like, the idea of the exercise and, and kind of get doing something. Um, like, I, I know um, one of my mentors is Brian Bowman, and he talks about, like, he'll go for a walk, he'll run, he'll do something, like, to try and, like, get outside, like, change your environment, things like that, if you're just stuck. So, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, I've definitely heard things like that before, and it gets back to, like, what we are talking about before. You, you don't know... Like what works for you may not work for me and what works for me may not work for someone else. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just about like figuring out, I get like, like the different options and going through it, like anything else you're going to test it and try and figure out what I would, I would be ballsy enough. And I would say sport, sports works for everyone. It's just I that would. we don't want to do it. <laughs> it's just like, because I hate it sport. I'm an artist. I was like, no, I will like hurt my fingers and whatever no sport works like it's really and even if like jumping jacks as i was saying like something stupid mm-hmm. it's because it's brain and it's chemical so yeah sport i, I would say my 100 percent is <laughs> if it's a bet i would say yes sports work because i'm also very introvert and very like prone to depression and all kinds of like bad stuff you know mm-hmm. just try it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so everyone who's, who's watching this like make sure you start that next time yeah and this is this is coming from both of us yes we're musicians but we're both introverts so if we can yeah. do it then yeah. you should be able to um, yeah. <laughs> so so um you were talking a little bit earlier about the idea of like kind of getting in flow and and the other aspects of that does that help you in terms of kind of getting the most out of your day or like what do you like how do you end up trying to get the most out of of your day whenever you're trying to, to work every day um, I learned something very really important. Everyone works in a different way. And mm-hmm. most people, the way they're working, it's uh, the industrial method, like from nine to five, you're there and you're working and you're not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my case, between nine to five, I'm good for nothing besides like talking to people <laughs> or something, but I'm not creative at all, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, it should be really much about knowing exactly how your internal uh, clock works and playing by the rules. And also during this time, for example, um, because I was saying like analytics and fun, it's, it's, it's blended together. Mm-hmm. Like I can do way more than I would do the whole day staying from nine to five. I was just giving an example of nine to five, right? But mm-hmm. just an example, you know, to see like I would do in two hours way more than I would do in that period of time, you know? Mm -hmm. also something else is most of the time when you give yourself too much time uh you're going to use it up meaning if it's like i have 10 hours to figure this out rather than that i say i have two hours to figure this out what i'm doing what i'm doing and you know it's just triggering your mind to think way faster because you know you become very like okay it's enough time i will sip a coffee i will like whatever you know Mm -hmm. so um, these two things worked for me really well Uh yeah yeah i I know i think that's what in general what humans seems to want to do right like we uh if you if you know there's a deadline on something then you'll 
I, I, I've read this everywhere and I know I've done it myself too. Where like, you're, you're like, all right, I've got three weeks to finish something. And then like the day before or, or like two days before you're like, Oh wait, no, I gotta, I gotta finish this. And then you, you work like what balls to the wall for like two days to try and get it done. That's like how we seem to be is like, whatever the deadline is, that's when we start to focus. Um, so yeah, if you can kind of manipulate yourself a little bit to, to try and, and get yourself into that state, which uh, I'm, I still struggle with that. I know like, like, like I'll, I'll do a roadmap or something. All right. From like 10 o'clock until one o'clock, I got this thing to do, but then you're like into it. So at that point you're like, yeah, I, I don't want to, or, or, or something comes up in your head and you're like, well, this other thing is more important. It's, it's like hard to, at least for me sometimes so like when you're doing that I'm like all right this is this is your deadline now you've got three hours get it done kind of thing mm -hmm. so 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 just kind of like like thinking about it just kind of tricking yourself to, like seems to work really good for you on that on that end yeah and i also like as you were saying about deadlines i'm most efficient when i have deadlines <laughs> <laughs> because then it's focus on it's focus and some um you're saying about what were you saying about I wanted to add an idea. It was something that's still regarding this. Uh, yeah, we are used to like a thing that we have have to work like each time a bit, a bit, a bit. That works really well for routine, for things that like, for example, teeth brushing or washing your hair or whatever, like getting a bath <laughs> from time to time, you know? So those are things that you should have them as routine, like all the time, right. because those are like a must, you know? Mm -hmm. But the other things, uh, what I what I noticed is most people are thinking that they have to be very like still box type like, uh, and somehow it's 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 not working, you know, because mm -hmm. the human brain and we are not not uh, built up to like uh, have a marathon. We're just like sprint, okay, take a rest, sprint, take a rest, sprint, take a rest, you know. And what I also noticed with uh, in my case, and probably also noticed that as well that when you are doing that you're even more efficient mm -hmm. rather than you know because then you give yourself the pleasure of okay i watched the movie i had the time okay now let's do this but once that you're doing that you're going to do it for 48 or 72 hours or whatever and then it's done you know <laughs> so it's like that, that that's it you know and um i still don't remember what i want to say but <laughs> a good segue I, I, I know i think it makes sense so it, it, it's it's the idea of like, if you're going to really focus on something for a little bit of time and like, you're going to go all in on it, like immerse yourself, whether it's a, like a project that you've got, like it's going to take most of your time for like, say two days or three days or whatever yeah. it is. But then after that, you just take time away. Like you, yeah. you, like it's, you, it's the get back the idea of like, you you have to recharge. You have to like, you can't go all in all the time. It's just not right. going to work. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like what I took away from that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. And, and, uh, and is yeah, my camera closing? Oh yeah, I can see, I can still hear. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but but I uh yeah, I think where I was going. Oh yeah, and and that gets back to the idea as well of like 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 why the question that I know I always come up with whenever I'm trying to to work on something, like all right, if I'm gonna go two or three days on something then I and I wanna relax afterwards, like I, I know I've gotta have my why, like the purpose that I'm gonna go through all that. So like, what, right. what's your purpose right now? Like when, for what you do, for doing what you do? Um, <clears throat> financial freedom, I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the why. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really not uh, into, I mean, I was raised very much into, in a very modest uh, family where it was like, we never talked about money, but we uh, spent a lot of money in the same time. Mm -hmm. and uh, for me it's now what's really important i notice that you're happier when you have at least that freedom rather than when it's also to think about how to make more money how to have enough for things you know so mm -hmm. that is my why at the moment for at least for this this uh, this product that we, we just launched you know right. and um other why I am not sure. I think that it can be for each day something different. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to get through it, right? It has, this, like we were saying earlier. There's, it's never like easy. There's always something that's going to come up or whatever it is, and you, and that's where whatever, whatever you can think of, that's your big reason to 
get past those stumbling blocks is is the way I kind of looked at it. Like, um, I know for me, it's like more my family and and yeah, financial freedom is part of it for me as well. But like, uh, just just kind of getting to a certain level, I guess, and 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 being able to provide for for family and and also like have that work life balance. I know it's for me, um, what it is. But everyone has their own. I mean, obviously, you were just talking about yours. So. Yeah, correct. And uh, as you were saying, yeah, exactly like that. I mean, what's your why? It's a very, um, it's very, it, it seems a very deep question, but it's in the same time, like, it's very, like, superficial, you know? So this is why I was saying for everything, what you're doing in your life, there is a why, you know? Like, mm -hmm. as you were saying about family, like, of course, uh, this year, we are just making, like, the 10, 10 years uh, anniversary with my husband, you know? Like, yeah. that's, okay, there's also a why. Why do you still... Uh, enjoy your marriage after 10 years how can you make it better like all those things you know like and also as I was saying financially because this is like what's on, on my mind now you know mm -hmm. uh, but I think that everything should have a why because if you don't have the why you don't have the purpose and if you don't have a purpose you don't have a mission to do and if you don't have a mission why are you on this earth you know so mm -hmm. and, and at the same time you know everything and everyone should have a why and they have a why Maybe some people don't have the right why. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, very true. I, I, I mean, it gets back to like the idea of like, like what we do is is yes, a lot, like it's simple, but it's not easy. And and like us as like business owners, and um, uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing in terms of the freedom of being able to work like when you want and and kind of make, create something for nothing. And like like obviously, you're just talking about your your private label product and. And to be able to do that, it's something that like few people are able to do, but it's also a very lonely uh, um, existence. It's very, it's something where you have to have that motivation yourself to get over, like when you're trying to figure out something out that you've never figured out before, it, uh, like, or, or you're constantly coming up against those roadblocks and like, what are you going to do to get over it? Like, if you don't have whatever that why is that's going to work for you, then ultimately that's where people... The only time I'll ever say failure is when you actually just give up um, because you don't have something that, that helps you get past that to grow. Um, so whatever it is, like you were saying, I mean, um, uh, just kind of figuring that out and just what, like having enough that you can keep at it until you finally figure out that, like that, uh, whatever helps you get past the, that roadblock. I just kind of, uh, how I look at it. Um, and just to add a short thing to that, because we were talking about affirmation, it's what's like, uh, I mean, you have to recognize that if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be a self mutilator <laughs> because that's what you're doing. You know, you're just like beating up yourself. No, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can move forward, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I also like have now is on my screen, it's like problems are the doorways for opportunities. So I th this is why it's a mindset game. Everything is a mindset game. Mm -hmm. Because if you see problems of not again, not, you know, mm -hmm. then you're just going to discourage yourself, your own courage, your own uh, spirit, your everything is just going to collapse, you know. So this is why every time when you're seeing the positive in everything, you know, not in the, yay, this is so beautiful. No, why is that beautiful? And how could, could that help, you know? That's mm -hmm. also like that's adding up to that why, why you're doing that, you know, because that, that gives you motivation and energy and you'll say, you know what, let's, let's go for this, you know, it's not like I'm going to be down because it's in the same time, it's like, I know it sounds very mean in the same time, very rude or very direct, but you can be either a hero, either a victim. Mm -hmm. And each second you're choosing which one you want to be, you know, yeah. so um, adding up to why. <laughs> yeah, and, and I definitely would agree with that. I mean, it's like, like uh, in the past when I've talked about I and mean, I don't think I've talked to you about it to you as much, but like for people that are listening or I put it out there all the time on social media, like some of the negative mindsets that I know I've had in the past. And, mm -hmm. and, and like, I was playing the victim, that whole thing. <laughs> like I would argue that probably 70 or 80% of the world is playing the victim um, yeah. most of the time. And everyone has tough circumstances. I mean, I'm not going to like, obviously even with the, like the viruses make it even, it even worse. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't, acknowledge those circumstances if they happen to you but but ultimately what are you going to do with it are you going to play the victim um where like you're going to let that be the reason that your life is terrible or are you going to look at it from what can i do to to 
get past this to to make a better life or to be happier whatever it is that you're looking to do ultimately and i know i know for me I, I, it was it was it was a hard process and it's it's something you that you struggle with every day but um but ultimately if you can kind of look at it like you're saying about not the victim but but looking at the positive aspects then that's where you can be that like 10 percent or two percent or whatever it is where you're actually like moving forward and not just the victim game and now that you brought up also the pandemic and everything, uh, truth is that we were truly blessed because we could work from home all this time. So that's like other people didn't have jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we could work from home this time. And tr du during these seven months, since I started all like, or we started all this business and everything, I did way more than the past five, six, seven years. And actually the pandemic helped me because it was, I was isolated. I could focus, you know, most of the time, like, this is why I was saying that problems are really those two opportunity. You can see it like, oh my God, I'm not seeing my friends. Oh my God, I will be depressed. Oh my God, whatever. Yeah, that's also possible, but this is your opportunity. Most of the time you were saying that 10%, it's like, yes, this is why they are going to succeed because they are not thinking the way how everyone else is thinking, you know, and I'm not saying that's easy, you know, but, um, life is not easy you know and everything what you get very easily that's also the value that you're going to put on it you know it's like easy come easy go so in the same time yeah definitely yeah. we're good at philosophy douglas <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey hey musicians are the smart ones right we got it all figured out <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so so another thing like because obviously you've been having success so far with the private label so so would you say like that's one of your proudest moments or would you say something else is like kind of like your proudest moments at this point? Um, I would say this one is this because um, like also as a musician and also like coming from that world, you always see that you're going to be appreciated only by people who are doing the same thing as you are. Mm -hmm. And because there are not so many of those, most people like the 90% will say, oh, that's weird. That's a weird girl. Oh, I don't want to talk her to her. Oh, that's like, she's too deep for me. It's like, I don't like to be super, I, I like to be superficial or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this truly is the most proudest moment because I think that I, I proved to myself that I can. And once that you're proving to yourself that you can, you can do everything then afterwards because it's like the small steps, you know, and it was, okay, you're building your life on small wins, right? So it was winning. Yes, I found the right supplier. Yes, I found the, the right sales rep. Yes, I found, I don't know, I, 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 I negotiated a really good deal. Yes, I did. You know, and everything it's built up on that win, 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 win. In the same time, when it's happening in, in life, it's, you can also build up on uh, losses, like I lose there, I lose there, I lose there, I lose there, and you will become to yourself a loser. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, even if it, that is not true, you know, even if that is really not true, but this is what you will think about yourself, you know? Right. So I think also here, the winning mindset, you will think, okay, I've got that, I've got that. I'm like, and you're popping up yourself and your spirit, and you will see that because you told yourself and also acted upon it and also you're telling yourself, look, I invested so much time in it. And like how it's not possible to win at this game, you know? Mm -hmm. And then somehow it's like, um, I think, yeah, everything is a mind game, as I was saying. Everything is a mind game. And then you will just notice that each, each um, uh, good choice will bring to even more good choices and each bad choice will bring you to even more bad choices, you know? And it's right. even harder when you have a good choice then a bad one then you have to make two steps you know like um there's also like in financial trading when they are saying that okay most people when think okay it's like 100 percent of your of the amount that you have right and you lost 10 percent, and they are saying okay i have to like just make back 10 percent. no you have to make it double that much you know because right. other words like you're not back where you were you know so um definitely proud <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes sense though it, and i know it, it kind of relates to like a thing i've heard is is the idea of, of like if you can get that momentum going a lot of times and you're actually like like working on that it starts to like i think i've heard that during like virtuous cycle when like it starts to to have the, that like uh can't remember the example but something like like you're you're rolling that 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 boulder like like 
down the hill and then it started to just go on its own after a while, but you need to get that momentum first um, where you feel like you've been like pushing that boulder uphill forever. But then when you finally get that going, then you can start to see like that big, big jump like really quickly with like not as much effort, but you have to get over it first <laughs> um, when you're doing it. Uh, I think here what helped me is like a first time because uh, in February when I went to the first meeting, uh, to the Wizards of Amazon meeting and afterwards the next week it was like here in Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. and my question because it was uh, asked me anything to Carlos it was like so I am afraid that what I am doing it might turn out really well and his reply it was very very ironic and very like so is that what you're afraid of is that a, of are you afraid that you're going to uh, sell out of stock from the first month is that your real fear you know and first, I know it hurt me so deeply, you know, my ego and everything is like, how could you, this was a fair question. Why did he like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was my moment that like, you, usually, you know, when people that you're respecting uh, very much or like highly regarding, and now Carlos says, yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> you're looking at me. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's just, I'm not recognizing because, you know, then all the karma and all the capacity is going, going to go away. But um, usually what's happening is whenever you're um, seeing someone that you admire and they are going to hurt you very deeply, mm -hmm. like on this level, you know, that will be, you know what? Actually, that's not true. You know, actually, I can prove myself that I can do that, you know. And now re regarding to uh, Richard Ford and it was uh, Robert Kiyosaki. Also with them, uh, like five, five years ago, we took a real estate course with them. and. Uh, at the end of the course it was that you were allowed to send in your question you know mm. and I, I was bragging to them, like yeah you are real estate agents and blah 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 and we're taking the course and I, I asked a stupid question like where can we find other investors or something like that mm. it's true in all truth it was like we were in Austria and it was like totally different and whatever but he answered so mean so freaking mean mm -hmm. and that hurt me so deeply you know and then I was like thinking afterward like Actually, he was right, you know, mm -hmm. and most of the most of the time what I think that momentum is built up like, are you freaking like, are you for real? Can I really not do that? You know, and like, it, it just takes you to go through that, you know, because most of the time people are not sincere because they are afraid of uh, uh, hurting your feelings. So what's happening is like everything becomes very uh, superficial and whatever. But mm -hmm. whenever someone is very sincere, that's what is going to move the ball for you, you know, because you, you think that you, you actually are good at that when in, in fact you are not, you know, and someone right. is just telling you, to you like to your face that you're not, you know, and that's like, am I really not? Okay. Let's, let's make it happen this time, you know? So right. um, very long answer yet again. <laughs> no, no, but it, I mean, it makes sense. And, and I know like whenever I'm talking to anybody, um, like, Yes, you always like I, I've always pretty much been taught like, oh, yeah, be nice about things. And like, like in terms of the way that you talk to people, all those kinds of things. But um, as I get in business, the more and anything else that I'm doing in, in life, I don't want the superficial, happy, everything is amazing answers. I want to know what I can do to improve or, or, or is this a legitimate plan or or am I honestly doing the work like like. Uh, and I'd rather have somebody be completely honest with me about that. Like you're saying before in terms of like, and it, and yeah, it may suck in terms of like, you're getting that, that your immediate reaction is always to be defensive about it. And like, Oh, it, your my feelings or whatever it is, but, but you, you actually like think about it and like, all right, it, what, were they right? Like yeah. is, can I take something from this? And, and they weren't just trying to be a jackass. They were actually like being honest. Then, okay, now I got to look at it and be honest with myself like am i really putting the work well i'm probably not or or i thought i was really close but i guess i'm not like i, I am i overthinking this or yeah, not <laughs> yeah yeah so so really like at that point it like i'd rather those people in my life honestly like yeah yes when you're talking to somebody and you're having like a conversation you're having fun with like your buddies or something that's one thing but if you're actually trying to learn and trying to become better at whatever it is you're doing with whether business or life, I'd want to have those people talking to me and giving me the straight up truth. 
you know, what I discovered that actually I enjoy way more to stay and to stick rather with those people and have like also fun with them, not only like direct and serious stuff, mm -hmm. rather than with people that are like, oh, let's get, I don't know, you know, I'm not saying that those people are not good for connections and so on and, you know, or with family because with family, you will not, never talk about business because, <laughs> you know, they cannot understand some things and you're like, oh, they're like freaking capitalists and they're taking over <laughs> and you're like, no, this is not like that. <laughs> but uh, you would rather not get into those kind of discussions because you see that they're not living anywhere, you know? So you, in the same time, you're going to uh, value way more this type of person. And also the relationship, it would be way stronger rather than with some, some people who are uh, like not into what you're doing. And that's fine because you're not into what they are doing. So, you know, it's like, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great thoughts. And uh, so, um, thank, thank you so much for being on here today. I, I, I had like one other question here today. I wanted to ask as well is um like, so everyone's got their own de definition of it, but what's your definition of success? My definition of success. Hmm. Getting out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and telling yourself that no i can do this i can like go on and forward like, like and maybe just yeah i think that's success for me like motivating yourself that you can do whatever i mean i'm still struggling with those negative thoughts in my mind because like i didn't become who i am now like overnight so it's still like 25 years of negative thoughts and negativity and everything, you know? So I think just proving yourself that um, success for me is proving myself each time that look, I won and I'm enjoying that. I'm really celebrating those wins, small wins. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter which area, it doesn't matter if it's financial, relational, spiritual, other, it doesn't matter, you know, but just proving yourself that look, you are a winner and you can do this, you know, like it's people depend on you. You know, <laughs> people depend on you if you are, and if you are not doing it, no one else will, you know? Mm. So in short, that's my definition to success. <laughs> to success. Hey, hey, it's a great definition. Uh, and yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, I, I know for, for, for me, um, it's that same thought process of like, what can I, what can I do? So yeah, I, I, and ultimately it's, it's, it's obviously everyone's got their own thing that it's going to be, but. Uh, if it gets you going and it makes you happy, I mean, that's ultimately at the end of the day, what this is all about. Um, so, so uh, with that, I, I, I want to thank you again, Nomi, for being on and, uh, uh, and, and I will talk to, I guess, every, everyone here uh, next time and, and obviously check out, um, there'll be some links for, for Nomi as well. Um, and pay attention to her. Uh, she's the Instagram person you want to know as well. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, thank you everyone. And I'll talk to you guys next time. All right. Uh.